Magic Trick Monday. Magic Trick Monday. Here we go. Jason's going to okay. attempt to put the straw. <laughs> oh no! Some of it got left in there. Oh, whatever we will do. Magic Trick Monday. <laughs> really bad Magic Trick Monday. Really <laughs> bad. Uh, we'll be right back. Good morning, welcome to Wake Up. Before we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. Pastor Jason. And uh, we got a great show for you today. Yeah. Are you really going to do a card trick? There you okay. go. What up? Do I show people? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, show them. Which one? Are we doing it that camera? I don't know. All right, put it down. All right. Let's see if we can do this. Make one pile. Mm hmm Two pile. Okay. Three pile. There yeah. you go. Yep. Pick any one of them. I'll pick this one. All right. Is that your card? Do I do I lift it? Yeah. Yeah, that's my card. All right. That's kind of crazy. Pick another I'll pile. I'll take this one. Okay. That's my card too. So it's just multiple of the same card. This is the same card. Over and over again. This yeah yeah. But is it really? Because when you see it. Oh, well, we kind of did something like this before. Did we really? Yeah, a couple weeks ago. I don't think so. I do. I remember the nine of clubs. It was the nine of clubs. I have a. a, a the a, cards are all cut at different lengths. That you're not supposed to tell the trick. I took an <laughs> oath. I took a magical <laughs> oath. <laughs> we'll be right back. Wait, did we already be right back? Yeah, we were back. We're back. Good morning. Welcome to uh, wake up. We'll be right back. Where we wake up? <laughs> I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. And we got a great show for you today, and yeah. uh, we're excited. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really, it really helps us out a lot. If you'll simply hit the just go down there, there's a little thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up button, that means mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little share, just share it. Yeah. Copy the link, put it on your social media, put it out there. Yep. And it helps us out tremendously. Yeah, it does. The shows are growing, the views are growing, the subscribers We're are growing. We're going to Very be thankful. today in a Luke 20, wait. Oh, there it is. Uh, 23 and kind of in verse 40-ish uh, area. As, what do you got there? Uh, I got a, 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 good, a goodie there. What is this? What do you mean? It's called a Bible. A Bible. I know. My Most people's Bibles look like this. Yeah. So that's like kind of an old school. This kind is of like thing. it's almost. It's right after parchment. <laughs> do you have to unroll it, or how does it work? I, I don't. I still don't know how it works. <laughs> like, cause I'll go on the top, like like that one right there. Like I can just go to it. I go, hey Siri, uh, Jesus wept, and then it, it. But it doesn't work. Oh. Yeah, it's not true. automated. No, not as far as I know, I don't know how to work it. I got put batteries in it, but it just doesn't seem to do what. It well, this, re read the scripture. It has this cool feature, it's, though. It still looks like it has the power of God in it. So <laughs> let's read let's the scripture. Watch the clip first. Oh, watch the clip. You know, I want you to know that what you put inside matters more than what's happening on the outside, and that's what God's up to, because you are a finely tuned, handmade machine. Come built on. and designed and engineered by the living God to be an overcomer. You are, you are an amazing work of art. And God says you can't just put anything on the inside of you. So good, Jason. Uh, I'll, uh, just watch it. I was talking about my finely tuned car that wouldn't take Kobo gas. <laughs> it won't. It won't take... It won't I was take. driving... Like, it was a 20-year-old collector's car. It was a beautiful car. I got, yeah. I got it for a really good deal. sold it for a price. I just like cars. And, and, yeah. and I... And God helps me make money through cars. And there, there I was driving this amazing car around for about a year. And, and It uh, wouldn't drive on hobo gas. No, if you put anything but Shell premium gas in it, it would get mad at you. It would have error lights. <laughs> and I think that, that we're built to be finely tuned machines right. to live out our destinies, to live out our dreams. You know what's interesting, Jason? What you put on the inside of you, what you allow in. Mm -hmm. So things are coming at you all day long, mm -hmm. right? So, and I was watching... Um, this this cool show the other uh, last night uh, we work it's a a true documentary, and the lady she she said you know negative thoughts come knocking on the door she goes just don't let them in, and <laughs> I go so uh, goes oh my god she's talking Bible all the way through this thing wow and I went right they come knocking they do but hey, you know just like your home do you just let anyone come inside you know if they just knock on the door of course not right I, I only let the things that I know that are being positive for my home come on in. Anything negative, I'm sorry, you can't come in. Yeah. So you have, you can't knock it on the door. You have your past uh, failures knocking on the door. You have your things that didn't go right knocking on the door, things that are wrong with you. And you just go, oh, I'm sorry, not today. We're busy. I only let in peace, joy. And that's what the Bible says. 
that only think only on those things that are uh, praiseworthy, profitable, those things that build up, those things that encourage. Those are the only things you let in. Who could it be knocking at, at my door? door. Da, 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 da. Don't make a sound. Tiptoe across the floor. <laughs> Wait. Who is it? Candy gram. Uh, I didn't order a candy gram. Uh, you're double parked. I, I don't even have a car. <laughs> I forgot the last one. What does he say? I think it was candy gram. Ma'am, I, I think you, you double parked. I think you're blocking me. Uh, it's the uh, land, land shark. shark. The land shark. <laughs> It's the dumbest skit of all time. We need to we need to warn you guys right now. If if somebody knocks on your door, it could be a land shark. If if you do find a land shark, what you need to do is <laughs> um, let him in and offer him some tea. <laughs> oh, Saturday night! I don't know if they're watching this. They're like, that is not very funny. It was hilarious back then. It was very funny. Uh, all right, so your 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 sermon. I was like, oh my god, it was when you were telling me about it before you even taught it. Because you were talking about Barnabas. Barabbas. Barabbas. But is it... Barney. I call is it, it Barney. Is it Barabbas or Barabbas? I want to know. Barabbas. How do you say it? It's Bra Brabby. But who says it? Like, does, is Barabbas around telling us how to say his name? <laughs> Maybe he's like up in heaven going... <coughs> it's Barry. It's Barabbas, you guys. Seriously. They got it wrong. It was, with the G is silent. Yeah. Bar Barabbas. He was the one that should have been on the cross, mm. but Jesus took his place. And you said it, it, it was a picture of you and I that we should get the punishment for our sin, mm -hmm. but Jesus took it upon us, yeah. for us. And it makes and, sense as you, you, know, you grow up in a household and you're, you, you mess up and your father punishes you. Right. So that, that's how we're kind of built to just believe that's how things should go. Right. And so when I do something, then God's mad at me. And, and, and we kind of bore this out some last week. Uh, but I thought going just a little bit further past that, it's really interesting that Jesus is on the cross. Mm -hmm. There's a couple uh, thieves who deserve it are on the cross, right? Oh, that's a really good point. Right, and you got the one yeah. cri criminal who says, you know, he does what people can do. He's like, oh, if you're the Christ, save yourself and save us. But the other answered, rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly for receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a sinner, right, who isn't living life right. Mm -hmm. He says, as surely I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And you see the really, in, in some ways, the, guy the first got, salvation, well, which wasn't really worked for. He was the first earned. guy in, maybe. He was. He, he didn't work for it. He didn't earn it. He got up there, and they're like, how did, how did she get in here? Yeah. And he's like... Oh, I, I he simply believed. By the grace of God. He believed. He believed. He believed that Jesus Christ was the Savior. Yeah, he wasn't water and, baptized. And the Bible said, whoso, he wasn't water baptized. Mm. He wasn't living perfectly. He mm. hasn't done all the right things. We he didn't get the praying. big, we didn't even get the big repentance speech. No, he didn't even ask for forgiveness. He didn't ask for forgiveness. He was simply in. And we're not saying that you don't have to ask for forgiveness. We're not saying that you don't have to repent. We're just saying, look at the grace of God. It is rich. He believed though. Whosoever believes yeah. shall not perish, but have everlasting mm -hmm. life. And you see in here that the devil can get us into works and get us into condemnation and get us into shame and get us trying to, to be perfect. Not that we don't want to live life at a higher level. Mm -hmm. My wife said, I think maybe you said this last week also, kingdom living makes a better life. It does. It just does. Yeah, of course. But it is not your ticket to get into heaven. No, you're not going to earn it. Because the Bible says no one man earns right through their works a place in heaven mm -mm. so that they may brag and boast, which makes sense. God's like, I'm not going to send my son, mm -hmm. have him be crucified on the cross, mm -hmm. and have you somehow bypass everything, be good enough, and come up here and go, I did it. Yeah. I prayed enough. I was I was, I was it. a knife. I, I did, did it, it all. Yeah. And we didn't need Jesus, actually, to be honest with you. We yeah. could have done it without him. And it's really kind of embracing that forgiveness, I think, and, and keeping our, our minds on the idea that... Um, how, how we've been forgiven, that it's almost like a door or a gateway to loving others. It really to, is. To remind yourself of, okay, I wasn't all figured out, and, I, and God saved me. Under your, 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 your thing, that you, I, and I love it, hurting people hurt. Condemning people condemn. Yeah. Right? Uh, you, condemned what did, people. Condemned. So when I'm condemned, when, when I, I feel, feel condemned. condemned, I condemn other people. Yeah. When I'm hurting, I'm hurting other people. Right? When things aren't right on the inside, as we kind of bore out last week, 
then what's missing on the inside is going to come out on other people out there. But, but maybe when I have loss, I want you to lose. And that's really a gift because when uh, I'm full of joy, I give joy. I give joy. Like whatever I'm, be careful. Whatever I'm full of, <laughs> this is what I'm gonna give. If you're full of, <laughs> yeah. you give, you give whatever you're full of. You do, and we don't mean that in a bad way. It's like, like, are you full of God's encouragement? Are you full of right. forgiveness, mercy, love? Are you, are you full of uh, valuing others? Are you, you ever been on the road and you're having just full a, of the spirit? You're having a really good day. You just things are just everything is on top, and somebody cuts you off, and I don't, I just get in there. Like, it doesn't bother you at all. Yeah. But there's the days where, like, you're just on edge. Yeah. And somebody, beep, beep, just something wrong. And you're like... Are you joking? You, I'll, put, I'll put it in the ditch, I'll brother. Put like, right I'll, in, I'll put this thing right... <laughs> it's right? true. Whatever you have on the inside. Whatever's so, your... So your... how important is it that I... There's going to be a party in my head. Mm -hmm. Do you remember our... <laughs> it was crazy. We had one party. Nine, we had nine, one party. We had one party. Mom and dad it, were gone. We got way out of control. Now, what we were doing, though, is I was, we were just old? inviting our friends. I was 17. Yeah, and I was I was 19 or whatever. So I, we just were going to have your friends and my friends over. We had a pool table. We were, we were playing hanging a little poker. Out, but yeah. And then all of a sudden, in Gilbert, Gilbert was small at the time. Yeah, everybody the word heard. Got out. Word got out. And so then all of a sudden, we Ding have dong. all these strangers walking around the yeah, house. Yeah, and it got there was cars down the street. It really got out of hand. And we're like... At one point, we had to have People brought beer. At, at, at there one, was a lot of beer. We had to have people... Li Do you remember? It was like a month later, and we're sitting in the kitchen, and I look over, and there was a, a beer bottle cap on the floor right underneath, like right by Dad, and I went, and you went, and we were like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I don't remember that one. And I had to put my foot on it, and then... Here's what I remember. I remember on the pool table, somebody had cleaned up beer with a rag. Oh, yeah. and, I, and I had a rag, and I was working on the car part, and we were all outside, and we, we had a pool table in the garage. You had bought the pool, this yeah. old pool table at a garage sale, and I'm wiping off this metal part for my car or something, and, and Dad goes over by the pool table, and he goes, why does it smell like beer right here? And he's looking at you, and I walk over, and I take the rag that's in my hand, and I switch it out for the beer rag. Oh, and, and I walk back to my spot, and I just keep wiping, and then he grabs the rag that, was, that I switched out, and he goes... I swear I smelled beer here. There was beer here. <laughs> it was so bad. Why are we telling them this? You know what's funny? Dad he's, might watch this. I think he's still to this day no, no, didn't no, know. You gave me another story. Pool table story. So me and Troy decided we wanted a pool table. He was my, he was my best friend at the time. So we go. It was on the newspaper. We went to this guy's house. There was a guy there. One of the biggest guys I've ever seen in my entire life. Like he, he was like 6'6", six, six, 300 pounds. And he talked about how he just got out of prison. Oh, my. Right, so we're like, hey, and this is back then with credit cards and everything else. So we bought the pool table, I think, for four hundred dollars, but we only had three hundred dollars cash on us, and we couldn't. And the guy goes, "That's fine. Just bring me the hundred dollars uh, next week." And Troy, and Troy goes, "Yeah, I'll bring, I'll bring you the hundred dollars on Monday." Right, so we, so now you have to see this pool table. There was four of us on one side. It was solid slate at the time. And he was on the other side. Oh, this guy could lift the. Picked up the and he and, he and you was, guys were big. Like you and your friends were big. We were wrestlers. You guys we, were wrestlers. We were strong. He's yeah. out by himself. Wow. And he's like, "Come on, right?" So we load it up. We get it home. We had to have more buddies come over just to get it off and get it set up. Right. It's my, a month. A month later goes my, by. We're playing pool outside. My heart is aching right now. But we're playing pool, and I go, and I just came. I go, so Troy, you dropped off that that hundred oh, no. bucks. Oh and no. And Troy goes, "Why would I do that?" Oh no. And I go. Oh my God! Oh you, no! You, a guy that's in prison, you didn't pay him a hundred dollars. Oh, give him the hundred dollars, please. <laughs> please, try. please give him the hundred dollars. Why would you give him the hundred dollars? <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm like, well, I go, go give it to him. He goes, if I go over now, he'll probably get his hands on me. I oh. go, I don't even know what to do with it now. Oh my God! I don't know. Oh no! This is oh. so bad. <laughs> Wait. But, anyway, but what's the point? Of, like, where's the 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 cool ending here? I'm still alive. Okay. <laughs> But he's watching this. Maybe like he's you're watching. Tying, but you're tying funny, this into the. Would be the, funny though, is he's watching it right now, and he's like, "Oh, okay, Livermore Bible Church. I'll be there on Sunday." <laughs> Where's my hundred dollars? Oh, remember the guy from the movie Two Dollars? Yeah. Two Dollars. I, I want my two dollars. Two dollars. Better off dead. Anyway, um, who you let in? Right? Who you let in is a big part of the party that goes on the inside. I yeah. encourage you to let in peace, 
Let it enjoy. Don't let, let the wrong happy. people in. Don't let the wrong party Don't in. Don't let the negative thoughts get in there. Don't let the things that put you down get in there. Mm-hmm. Simply stop them at the door. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And allow Jesus to come in, and he'll fill the void. Yeah. Amen? You want to Amen. pray over him? Well, Father, I thank you, Lord, for uh, transparency today. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> thank you, Father. God, that you're helping us guard what gets in, that, that we learn to guard our hearts with all diligence from the, the things that try and get in, whether it's some wrong relationships, Lord, uh, letting the wrong um, things on the inside, the wrong information, the wrong knowledge, Father God, the, that we're being careful to let the good things in, encouragement, joy, Father God, that we're receiving from you that wellspring of life, that, we, that you are our provider, Jehovah Jireh, that you're pouring all of your love into us by your Spirit, and that we are full and able to give freely all the good things that you give to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Watch this clip. I bought a few years ago a BMW convertible. Must be nice, Pastor. Oh, no, it is. It is. And put it on Facebook. 645 CI convertible, eight-cylinder, turbocharged, it was, uh, it was a 2004, it was a 20-year-old car, basically, 15-year-old car when I bought it. But I bought it for $7,000. I got a really good deal on this car. Now, this thing had been babied and garaged, didn't have a thing wrong with it, not a scratch. It looked like a brand new car. It looked like a $65,000, $70,000 car. In fact, it sold brand new in 2004 for $100,000. This was the Ferrari or the Lamborghini of the BMWs. It was featured in Car and Driver in 2004. This car was ridiculous. I loved it. I couldn't sell it right away, even though there was so much profit in it. I ended up selling it eventually to a car collector from Iowa who flew in to buy the car. But for one year, I drove that car, and I loved it, and I drove it unashamedly. People walk by, must be nice, Pastor. Oh, it is. It's nice. <laughs> This $7,000 car is worth half of what your Honda Accord is worth. (laughs) Or what you paid for it, anyways. And so, as I drove this car, uh, I noticed that this little error light would come on all the time. It would say, uh, high emissions warning. I noticed that it would always come on or go off right after I got gas. You know, the tank would be empty and I'd fill it back up with some gas and then it would either go off or go on. I started to pay attention. And here's what I noticed, that unless I put premium shell gasoline in this car, it would give me a warning light. It was as if to say, um, excuse me, I'm a BMW, I'm not a Ford, I don't do regular gas, I'm not drinking hobo gas, you'll need to go ahead and put the premium stuff, I don't do mobile and I certainly do not do Circle K. You know, I want you to know that what you put inside matters more than what's happening on the outside. And that's what God's up to. Because you are a finely tuned, handmade machine built and designed and engineered by the living God to be an overcomer. You are, you are an amazing work of art. And God says you can't just put anything on the inside of you. You have to put the right things on the inside. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Be in church this weekend. Yes, where your uh, church 12 is. 12-week challenge. Be yes. there 12 weeks if it does not make a major difference yes. in your life. Be blessed. I'll see you tomorrow.